We've been working our way through TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. In the last video, we took a look at the menu items, but we're now finished with the menus and moving on to the gallery description. Now, the gallery description controls apply to this portion of the gallery. Uh, this is where you get to title the gallery and also write words about your work. Uh, it's worth mentioning before we get into the controls that the uh, gallery title pulls double duty in TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. If you're using the selection gallery features to make uh, a client proofing gallery, when you get that email, it's going to have a gallery title in there. That way you know where you know which gallery that email uh, is coming from. And it gets that title from this field right here in the gallery description. So even if you're not going to be using this for your site, you might want to go ahead and fill this in. Now, uh, the very first option we have with the gallery description is the option to turn it off. Uh, if you don't want to use it for your gallery, you just disable that checkbox, the whole thing goes away, and you can breeze right on past this entire section of controls. But assuming we do want to use it, we have lots of options at our disposal. Uh, the first set of options is a checkbox array that controls the layout of the gallery description. If you don't want to use the subtitle, you can turn it off. If you don't want to use the titles, you can turn them both off. If you want to use the titles but you don't want to use the paragraphs, you can get rid of all the paragraphs in one fell swoop by disabling them. Again, assuming we do want to use the paragraphs, you can have up to three which you turn on using these checkboxes. There's also an image checkbox, uh, but we'll come back to that at the end of the video. So once you have uh, the number of pieces you want in your description set up, you can start editing the content. So to do that, you can either work on the, uh, the content here in the control pane, so title, subtitle, then you've got boxes for the paragraphs, or you can just come right on over into the preview and click directly on the text you want to change. So I'm going to call this gallery Nissan G5. The subtitle, I'm going to put the location. You might even want to put the date here if you know it. Um, you can click on the paragraphs, make those changes as well. I'm going to leave them alone for the sake of brevity. Um, moving down past the content, we get into the appearance settings. So we've got color pickers. Uh, you can change the background color of the box. I'm going to sample some green from my second display here. You can change the color of the border. Click and hold. Drag that around to sample colors. I'm going to grab some olive. You've got three color controls for uh, the text. One is for the title one is for the subtitle, and then the third, labeled uh, description color, is for the paragraphs. You can choose separate font stacks for use by the titles and for use by the description paragraphs. And like the other font stacks elsewhere in the template, you can go ahead and uh, reorder your font priority list or add new fonts to it if your preferred font isn't in any of the stacks. Uh, you can adjust the font weight of the titles, leaving them normal or making them bold. You can adjust the alignment of the titles, left, right, center, even justify. Uh, likewise for the paragraphs, you have left, right, center, and justification uh, available as options for alignment. The image alignment and the form alignment options we're going to go past for now. We'll come back to at least one of those later. Um, getting to the sliders, we have a slider for the title. That adjusts the uh, font size. We have a subtitle font size slider. And we have a third slider for the paragraph, the description font size. So all of that is individually adjustable. Uh, the inner padding, if you look closely, you can see that there's space on either side and at the top. Uh, that is attributable to the inner padding slider. If we take that down to zero, you can see that the text runs up against the side of the box on both sides and at the top. Um, I like to give my words some breathing room, so I'm going to pull that back out to about 20. 
The next slider down is pad sides. If you want to narrow that box overall, you can do that using this slider. And as you can see, it gets uh, taller the more narrow it is in order to accommodate the amount of text that you put in it. There's a slider for the width of the borders. And finally, there's a slider for rounding the corners. Now, this one only works in browsers that support CSS3. That means it's going to be good in Firefox, Safari, and Chrome. I do not believe it's going to work for Internet Explorer users. Um, but even if you can't see it, if you're using Internet Explorer, uh, the other browsers will still get that. So I like to leave it around 10, sometimes as low as 5, but just to give it a, a soft rounding take the hard edge off those corners. Um, and we've got two more sliders down here that are disabled presently. For those, we need to go back up and turn on the image. Ah, before I get there though, if you don't want this box at all, you can make it effectively invisible by sampling the background color of your gallery. And that gives you uh, the no box effect, where it's just words on the background. Right, back to that image. If we go back to the top, we can turn on that image checkbox, and what you're going to get is uh, an icon that basically tells you we're looking for an image, but we're not finding one. So you need to give it the path for that image, which you do right here, uh, using the image path input field. Now the way that works is you can go down to your, field, or your uh, film strip and select an image. So click on one of these to make it the active selection. I'm going to use this second thumbnail, and when we do that, what happens is that it locks in the uh, image name here in your uh, toolbar or in your film strip so that you can reference that. So we go back up to image path, and uh, we're going to leave photos the way it is and just replace the file name. Um, so the path should be photos slash, and then we type in that file name down there. So underscore mg underscore. 7346 hyphen capital E D I T dot and my file name says TIFF but when things export for the web we know that they become JPEGs so we're going to call that JPG. There's one more change we need to make and uh, if you've read my article on file naming conventions then you already know that the web module converts hyphens, spaces, and all special characters into underscores when it exports. So although there's a, a hyphen in this file name, we need to change it to an underscore. So that's going to become 7346 underscore edit dot jpg. That done, we hit enter, and when the gallery refreshes, we have our image. Uh, the image alt can be changed. Uh, this is descriptive text that is associated with the image uh, at the code level. So you're not going to see this on screen, but it's very helpful for search engines. Um, so it's great to fill in just a little bit of descriptive text about that image. We can then go back down to the lower section of this control panel. panel use the image alignment. Uh, center is default, but you can push that to the left or the right. When you do that, the text is going to wrap around that image. Um, and you can see that those last two sliders are now active. Uh, constrain image size lets you scale down that image if you'd like. So I'll take that down to about 260 pixels. And then you can use the image border slider to add more of a border. And it's going to get the color for that border um, from the outside border color, which is kind of hard to see right now because it's olive, but I can make that black. Reload the page. And you can see it pretty well now. So that's it for the gallery index, or the gallery description. And uh, we're nearly finished with the site info pane. Just one more video to go.